Today I'm at Lisbon's impressive Oriente station and we'll be checking out what it's like to travel on an intercity train down to the Algarve. Crossing over Lisbon's impressive 25th of April bridge and continuing through some of the south's beautiful scenery. Hello from the Portuguese capital Lisbon. Today we'll be catching one of the Portuguese intercity trains from here at the beautiful Oriente station down to Faro on the Algarve. Opened back in 1998, this station is now a major transportation hub served by both the metro and most long distance and suburban trains in the Lisbon area. The station is also home to a large bus terminal served by the likes of Flixbus and a few domestic operators. There's plenty of food options at the station, you will find these movable food stalls. As well as some more casual sit down places if you are not so much in a hurry. The station consists of multiple levels with the metro being below ground and the trains leaving from above ground. In between there's a mezzanine, which we'll be heading up to now. This is where you will find most of the ticketing options. But you can also do as what I did today and buy a ticket online in advance, which you can just show on your phone. I'll talk more about fares at the end of the video. There's both a few manned desks up here as well as plenty of machines. The station here features vending machines selling just about everything. And I mean everything, from marshmallows to canned fish. I skipped the fish and went for a beverage instead. Right, let's go and find our train. The station is fully accessible either via escalator or lifts. The structure here is very impressive, but it could use a lick of paint. I'm sure this would be absolutely stunning if it got a fresh coat of white paint. And here's our train, or the back of it at the very least. I love old school metallic destination boards like this. Our train is today hauled by a CP class 5600 built by Siemens as part of their Eurosprinter family. Built from 1993 onwards, they are capable of 220 km per hour. Right, let's get on board. I will be travelling in first class today, which is carriage number 11. These trains still use manual doors, which I personally love. All trains comes with seat reservations, and when you book online, you can select from a seat map. I've decided to pick one of the solo seats, number 52 in today's case. And shortly afterwards, we are rolling out of Oriente station on our journey down towards Faro. And with that, let's take a closer look at today's route. We are on board Comboios de Portugal intercity train number 572. Starting from Lisbon's Oriente station, we'll be making stops at Intercampos, Citerias and Pragal before leaving the Lisbon area. The following stops are then Pinhal Novo, Grandola, Eremidas, Funchera, Santa Clara, Messines, Tunis, Albuferia, Lule before arriving into Faro. The whole thing is scheduled to take 3 hours and 33 minutes to cover the 303 km which translates to an average speed of 85 km per hour. Leaving Oriente we take the route heading north of Lisbon city center towards two major stations. The first of which is Intercampus. The station here is an interchange with the metro and located close to some of the major roads. A lot of people will be getting onto the train here. Next up is Ceterias, also a major interchange point in the Lisbon area.
In addition to being an interchange with another of Lisbon's metro lines, the railway station here at Setorias is also a major railway junction, as we diverge from the line towards Centra, heading south towards the 25th of April bridge. The 25th of April bridge consists of two levels, where we will be on the bottom level under the major roadway. The bridge takes us over the Tagus River, which is the one Lisbon the city is located on. The bridge was initially opened all the way back in 1966, but the lower level where the railway travels was actually not completed all the way until 1999. Before that, trains from the south of Portugal had to terminate on the other side of the river. Back then, the train used to take the line from Pinhanovo to Barreiro, where the connection to the ferries across the Tagus could take you to Lisbon. The bridge itself is a 2.3 km long steel suspension bridge. It's not breaking any world records, but it does offer some great views of the city. The crossing only takes a few minutes at a relatively moderate speed. There are currently plans for a third Tagus river crossing, which would involve a new road and rail tunnel to carry a high speed railway. This would probably improve journey times across from the south into Lisbon, but we are still in very early days with that proposal. And we have now made it to the other side, where our next station stop will be Pragel. In Pragel, the onboard staff were kind enough to inform us in five different languages that the onboard bar is now open. And with that information, I guess we have to go and find the bar now. So let's go for an explore of the train. The train consists of a first class car at the front where I was sitting, where you also find plenty of luggage page at the end of the corridor. For a second, I thought this door was actually locked. But no, you just need to pull a lot heavier than I initially expected. Now we are up in the second first class car, which is actually combined with the bars. So the section here is first class and the next half will be the bar carriage. Here there's plenty of space to have a little light meal or enjoy a hot cup of coffee. The offering is mostly prepackaged food, drinks, snacks and other small stuff. Perfectly acceptable for three and a half hour journey. Next up we are making our way into second class, which is very similar but is in a 2 plus 2 layout instead. Plenty of space for luggage and you will also be able to bring your bike. These seats are also perfectly acceptable to travel in and I have done it plenty of times before on previous trips to Portugal. Anyway, you will also find some more luggage storage in the middle of the carriage as well as the end of the corridor and you can see it's really needed on these intercity trains, so good job of CP for actually fitting these carriages appropriately. Right, on to the next carriage. The rest of the train is just more of these standard class carriages, so we will just quickly teleport to the end. As we are on a classic local hall train, at the back there will almost always be a good view of the landscape we had just been passing through. At the end of every carriage is also where you will find the toilet. To get some water you have to press this button on the floor. The toilet was stocked with crushed soap and was otherwise pretty clean. There's also toilet paper. Good job, combiners. Now back to the seat review. Which features a basic tray table, fairly sturdy, a small cup holder. There's a bin over here. And you'll find a storage net. There's no power sockets or anything like that. No recline button either. These seats come pre reclined, but they're very plush and comfortable. Some of the better rail seats out there. But I do wish they would add a power socket in a retrofit soon. 
And with that, I think it's time that we kick back, relax and enjoy the rest of the journey. Our train is now coming into the Messines Alde station. It's a small town of about 8000 people and is our first stop in the Algarve region of Portugal. As the line south towards Faro is mostly single tracked, we sit here for 8 minutes awaiting a passing train. We are waiting for one of the northbound Pendolino trains, which is the fastest type of train in Portugal. And there she was. Let's get back on, we must be departing shortly. I also tried one of the Pendolino trains while I was here in Portugal, so subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss it. From here on we are fast approaching Faro. It's only three more intermediate station stops before we will be arriving. Such as the one here in Albuferia, a popular resort town, very busy in the summer holidays. The station itself is a bit far from the city center, but there is a frequent bus service to take you there. I remember it only being a few euros. And as the sun sets and the day ends, so it's our journey. It's time to talk about fares. I bought my ticket using the CP mobile app just a few hours in advance for 22 euros in first class, which includes a youth discount. If you book further in advance, you can get promotional tickets on their website, which starts for the section between Lisbon and Faro at around 11 euros. There is only a limited amount available, so if you can book early, you might save some cash. You can just show tickets from the website on your smartphone, or you can print them, and the same thing goes for the app. CP offers a great value for money. The trains are comfortable and fast enough, and it's a great option between the major cities. Even costing just 22 euros on the day is exceptional value. One thing you should be aware of that in recent time, at least the last two times I've been to Portugal, there's been some kind of strike call for either on the days I've been or just around them. So make sure to check the Convoyers website a few days before your journey, as there might be changes to the schedule, usually some form of minimum services run when there's a strike on. And here we are, arriving into the station here in Faro, the end of the electrified railway network in the south of Portugal. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this, or maybe giving the video a like if it was helpful. You can also follow me on Twitter if you want to stay up to date with my travels in real time. That's everything, thank you so much for watching this video.